This program is brought to you by Real Estimate, Australia's number one property value estimate. Get your real estimate today on realestate.com.au. It's great to have your company here on Business Now. Let's check out the local housing markets and the weekend home auction results. Across the country, according to REA Group, there were 1,764 auctions. The clearance rate uh, was a tick above 60%, you can see there. It was actually stronger there, just more properties on the market. In Sydney, 649 auctions, that's up a bit as well. But the clearance rate here, you can see just above 62%. Now, in Melbourne, there were just uh, 704 auctions, again higher, uh, and just over 64% of those were sold. Brisbane had 69 auctions over the weekend. The clearance rate there was just under 64%. In Adelaide, 48 auctions. There was an ongoing strong clearance rate there, just under 73%, but not above 80% as it has been. In Canberra, 58 auctions and the clearance rate 62%. In WA, things were pretty strong. Seven auctions, but 690 private sales. So let's bring in here Cameron Kusher, the Director of Economic Research at REA Group. Cam, many thanks for your time. I just want to go and start with a speech last week by the Reserve Bank Assistant Governor, Sarah Hunter. Um, and, and really, she started to talk about the parallels of migration and the number of people who are actually living in houses or homes in Australia right now. Yeah, thanks, Ross. She was talking about that, and it's quite an interesting, I guess, little tidbit of information. We know that the rate of population growth over the last 18 months has been exceptionally strong. Over the 12 months to September of last year, the population increased by about 660,000 people. 83% of that population increase is coming from migration. And, of course, most people that are coming into the country are coming in on temporary visas. So... They're not likely to be buying a home. What they're likely to be doing is looking to rent a property. At the same time, we've got a big slowdown in the level of new housing construction. And what we've seen through the pandemic is the average household size has shrunk. So that's created overall more demand for housing as well. So it's really highlighting the challenge that we face at the moment, that we have this rapid population growth. We've got smaller household sizes creating more demand for housing. And we're not delivering enough housing at the moment. To me, I don't know about you, but that's almost counterintuitive because I would have thought that if you've got a very big increase in population, big increase in rents and housing values, that more people would live together, more kids would stay at home. But what you're saying is that that trend from the COVID, the pandemic, the lockdowns has continued and that household sizes remain very small. It's, that's exactly right. As the cost of living and inflation has gone up and as obviously the cost of renting has increased, you would have thought that the average household size would start to trend up. Now, the Reserve Bank started publishing this data on a more regular basis. It has increased a little bit from where it was from its recent low, but it certainly hasn't rebounded back to those levels we were looking at pre-pandemic, which is which is quite surprising. And again, if we continue to see these uh, difficult rental markets and we continue to see higher prices both to rent and to buy, um, I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see that tick higher again. But at the moment, it seems that people are holding out from, from forming those larger households. So, so take me to another disconnect in the housing markets right now, and that is housing sentiment and whether people think it's a good time to buy um, versus, you know, the, the intent in regards to that. This comes out of the Westpac Melbourne Institute. It does. So if we look at consumer sentiment, it's in the doldrums. Uh, pessimism has outweighed optimism for 27 consecutive months. Now, as part of that release, they have what they call the time to buy a dwelling index. And it's also at extremely low levels at the moment. So that says to me that consumers are doing it tough. They don't think things are great. And they certainly don't think it's a good time to be buying a property. Yet at the same point, we've got their house price expectations index, which measures, you know, do people think prices are going to rise? And that's pretty much at historic high levels, back at levels we haven't seen since early to mid 2020, when the housing, sorry, 2021, when the housing market was seeing really strong price growth. So it's, it's almost as if people realise it's really expensive, interest rates the highest they've been in 12 years, and it's not a great time to be trying to buy in the market. But at the same time, Prices are expected to continue to rise. So people are overcoming those, uh, I guess, concerns or, 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 you know, challenges 
and still buying because we're still seeing such strong price growth, particularly in markets like Perth, Adelaide, Brisbane, to a lesser degree, Sydney. So yeah, just again, that disconnect is amazing because people are saying it's not a good time for me to buy a property, but I do recognise that it probably is a good time because I expect prices will go up in the future by a lot, which is all the fundamentals of where the housing market is right now. Exactly right. And it comes back to our first point about the fact that we have this rapidly growing population. We're not building anywhere near enough housing. I mean, if we look at dwelling approvals, they're the lowest they've been in 11 years. So we're not getting the supply we need. And when you have this mismatch between demand and supply, uh, prices are only likely to go one way. And that's why we're continuing to see very strong price increases across the country. Cameron Kusher, always good to chat to you and have you on the program. Many thanks for your time today. Thanks, Ross.